starting to force the fight. You've got two players here for the defense. Dicey may have been spotted trying to get around the corner, but it's Sean to pick up the kill onto Asuna. That's his counterpart on the other side, and now they're wrapping. And they've got to get Dicey out of this position. The Tailwind to escape, but it's not fast enough. Can't get into the sewers quickly. And the spike will go down here for Genji. Yeah, and unfortunately, things not going even, and Hiko taking so much damage on the way out there as well. So that 3v4 doesn't necessarily feel like that unless Hiko can find himself a solid angle. And with the spike planted, everybody proper on this site for Genji. Strong gonna try and find some information. Went lower on HP, but he's got the stinger <laughs> in hand, and it's the fall damage to actually find the kill onto Steel. Now it's all Z. Make things a bit harder. Ooh. And again, Genji here on Haven. There's a nice flank there. Flash come out. It's a slow play towards A and Steel actually gonna head the opposite direction. They're still holding it down on the site and Dice is able to find two here. Trying to battle back and nod us up at one and the A site is not free. The bouncer is at the door. It's all up to Mikael and he's able to find two. Clear it out, but Nitro with the... With an Ares, there's flashes coming through as they push on to B and they're trying to push that fight towards the backside of C. They now have to deal with Steel, who's currently over inside the window and he's able to actually pick up two. Now the knives come out from Dicey as well and everything is falling apart here, but one it's back to even remaining. strength. Make it now a two on one. It's Kusta on the C site, and he's got a crossfire to deal with. One with the knives, one with the weapon. The cage goes down perfectly. The flash is going to come through here. The peak actually followed up, but no. Kusta's still not spotted. Spike is still in control of 100 Thieves as well. And this is just so dicey. It's Asuna to find the last sites Don't even show it as a match because it was that obscure. Here's the ult coming in as well. Hunter's Fury does go down. Dicey trying to dodge the damage on short takes significant damage though in that fight. Exactly so then gets rounded on as they come through. Mikael picks off Steel on the flank and it's a four on two with Genji returning fire here against Hunter Thieves. And again, that back and forth volley continues. Not done just yet in that back and forth. And again, this was the eco round to come out. Genji buying everything they could now getting the upgrades that they need and Kusta doing everything he can to right his wrongs. Pico once more finds himself up in heaven in a clutch situation. It's been a while since I've seen one of these. Pico working against the clock now. 90 HP. Got some armor to his name. They're gonna hear him jumping on down. He's gotta play. There's the first kill coming out onto Win. Able to sneak away for now. The Hunter sure gonna try and find the tag, but he's just gonna get dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. He has to do something. He's running out of time and I don't know if Hiko's got this one here. Halfway on the spike, it's my kill conversion on the ult. Yeah, a favorable trade, and in Garage, another favorable trade here, as it was an ult for some HP and a kill for kill over towards this C site. Now, this is not what I was expecting, as Nitro takes down Gimon, and unfortunately, to be locked down inside. Ooh. No, able to find another kill on the way out, and Nitro has been on fire since his return, and it doesn't stop here on Haven, but Costa. Finds the Lurker with a Lurk of his own. I like this play from Kusa as well. He gets far away and dodges a knife too as he jumps up into the window. Now the dart was in when he has to be careful if there's players already moving out onto the site. There's the Tailwind and the updraft from Dicey. Smoke's gonna go down on the spike. He knows that his target is at least a decent distance away. So he initially sticks it, pulls off after getting it halfway. It's now up to Kusta to try and stop this one and he's not going to get there in time. Likely going to back off of this and rotate out and play towards another site. Hoping that they pulled resources away, especially with Kusta being in this position. Didn't even see him on the minimap. He's able to get into this spot. Guarantee A site control. It's surprising that we haven't seen more resources dedicate there so quickly. Because they're getting down to now 17 seconds as they go for the plant. But there is time as they dedicate it. Ooh. Now that's a big shock dart kill coming out onto Kusta and a follow-up as well that does more damage. Blaze wall to come through as well as the smokes start to fade. This is scary right now for Gen G as Hundred Thieves will be able to retake pretty easily with what's left here for Gen G. And a beautiful arrow gonna force Win out of that upper ground oh, advantage. Oh. Mikhail from downtown though finds a double kill. Unfortunately, one was on his teammate, so we're still Last in a two v two on the one site. Make it a one v one. Sean needs to come up clutch here. It's the Stinger. What better than Bach the Stinger to close out that round? And Dicey, who's right around the corner, only has a classic but could upgrade early. Unfortunately, spots the barrel first, so it doesn't go that direction. Meanwhile, Phoenix tries to come through with a curveball, and Wynn is just cleaning up at this point. He's got three on the round as Hiko is pushed back by the shock darts. Genji have sight control again.
and you've got a bit going for you. Uh, Hunter's Fury available, but again, not really around. You want to do it, and unfortunately, Steel not going to find any value. It, it just seemed that knowing that 100 Thieves on this eco, Quinn snipped it out so beautifully. He creeps up, he spots the classic of Dicey in the corner. He even sends some rounds down range over towards that, uh, that mid garage area, thinking somebody might be creeping up trying to catch us off guard through the smoke. So, incredibly heads up on an eco round for 100 thieves and that is kind of what makes the eco round go your way sometimes that element of surprise as steel who's trying goes for the old pop run it back doesn't really produce the success you'd hope for when gets spotted by the tripwire and dies that's the ult going away as well 30 seconds left the killer is destroyed. does not feel great there to have those knives down operator also taken out so is kusta hiko gonna find that kill but the imposter will fall as Asuna goes down almost immediately in response. A 3v2, though, for 100 Thieves. And you have to plant the spike here if you're Gen G. You're running out of time. And you know that the push is going to be coming. The dash out onto the side of Tico with the shock guard and Nitro Acousta. And I, I don't think we stop see or the W team stops here. I think it was frenzies across the board for 100 Thieves. But a couple of kills traded back and forth might slow things down. You know what might slow things down? Uh, not having the spike, Bach. Yeah, that, that makes things a little bit tricky, doesn't it? Uh, the, the spike being down, but also the damage being dealt. Phoenix down sub-50, still on three health, and the Phoenix already used hot hands for the heal. And I don't think they're going to be prepared for this aggressive play from Gimon, who's pushed up. Gimon just has to be patient. No, don't do it. All right, well, now Gimon has to make a move as he's stuck in this corner. Now they're going to send some shock darts into that corner, but it only does five damage. Nice headshot around the bend onto Hiko. And again, low HP for two of the players remaining here. So what do they decide to do? They're going to see if they can get on this A site. A site is completely empty at this point. So Genji is going to have to play retake. Once Nitro takes out this tripwire, he'll be able to sneak onto the site, and he'll start pulling them Ten over. Seconds left. But what can Steel do in the meantime? Look at Steel's lurk coming through window. Uh, never mind. Steel can't do anything. He's 3 HP, and he gets shot in the head. Yeah, that, that was a tough one. It was... You'd really be hoping for a lot uh, from Steel on 3 HP to, to be able to find anything there. And unfortunately, that lurk goes a bit awry. Zasana looking to pick up the back end of the paranoia, but unfortunately, Kusta is there to help his teammate out. And it's all up to Nitro, who's been pretty solid in the multi-kill category. Able to find one, not the second. It's a slow play, and... Unfortunately, gets sniffed out there. The shock dart gonna drop the spike, and that flash gonna. Oh, Mikhail just short. backs away from it all. It's paranoia is short. Uh, curveball doesn't spot anything, and once more, the bouncer standing at the door here of this A site, not letting anybody in, not even Dicey, as he goes able to trade one back with the shock dart of his own, but quite easily. Steel's gonna be set up in mid. Oh, he was spotted, or was he? I thought for sure they saw him, and they did. Okay, so that's actually a big conversion. That's the SMG pickup for Gimon. Asuna actually uses the ult and walks through into Garage. What they're not anticipating is a second player behind him. So that's actually really well set up. The dart will go in, and there's ults being popped on both sides. Sean's just going to charge in. Doesn't seem to care. The run it back works out nicely for Sean. And we're now in a three on two. Spamming towards the spike, but there's no one currently on it. He's still got Dicey inside. Short hot hands goes down to try and slow him down. Curveball around the corner as well. They tap the remains. spike again one more time, but it's all down to Gimon. Great damage coming out from Dicey, who finds four on the round. Those shots have been pretty close to on the mark, but he plays it on an off angle, so he's not able to line that up. And it'll be a five-on-five five post plant with good damage dealt here to some of the members of 100 Thieves. You do have a port coming in from Nitro. That's going to get canceled. You've got a lot of bodies built up in spawn right now. Asuna has to go big from this position. An updraft over top of the smoke does get them some intel as they start to fly through. That's Kusta to pick off Asuna. That means they've lost control of Garage. They have to be so careful as Kusta gets another one. Gimon now currently up on top of the site. And just like that, Gen G's made it. Steals on the flank, but they throw out the hat. They've got that position. They know where it's at. And because of that off angle position of the spike behind the box, members can really buy. So this one going to be important. Oh. And Dicey finding that kill is just as. John's able to trade one back onto Steel and Asuna. Looking to play aggressive. Going to get tagged out by the trap wire. Curveball coming on through. Nitro playing the off angle out towards A. Is able to open things up. And 100 Thieves back in the driver's seat. Oh, look at this lurk from Kusta, though. Kusta, he goes the wrong direction, but he'll be able to get this intel that they're not mid. So he'll be able to call this out. 
but unfortunately, if he had gone the other direction, might have had a better lurk. He'll still be able to go up into the window, but the delay it's going to cause will be potentially problematic. He's going to get there in time to catch out the Sova, and if he's patient, should be able to find a multi-kill out of this. It's all about timing. No! He gets spotted out. Now he has to be careful, has to back off. The Aldron ending at the perfect time. Kusta's still able to convert onto Asuna, who is around the bend, and you know he wants to spray through that wall, but it's Sean on site trying to give Kusta a fighting chance. It'll come down to this, a one-on-one -on -one between Kusta and Dicey. Dicey at full health, one kill away from the Blades as well, so picking this one up, gonna feel nice for the next round, and Kusta had been struggling on defense, or on offense, excuse me, to find these clutches, now needs to do it on the defending end, zero utility to his name and only 70 HP. He does have quite a bit of time. And Dicey holding this angle knows this is really the only way he can come from. Unless he does fake the defuse here. Kusta going to push on through. He's going to swing. Oh, he's going to find the kill. Kusta goes huge. He breaks his ankles, but it doesn't matter. What a clutch. This entire game. Now we see adjustments being made. Hot hands go through to try and stop that spike plant, but not going to be the case. It's a very fast plant on to B. Nobody really here to answer an Asuna anchored on this site. Everybody playing off. This is really good post plant and ultimately the only post plant that you can have. But Kusta again finds the lurker in steel and looks to put his team in a winning situation. Oh, Sean. Picking off Dicey as well, who had the ult. Quinn's got the knives out and says, I'll see you one and do even better. They tap the spike, but they know they can't stick it. There's one out of the window and one still up inside. They have to go for this one-to-one -one and they grab it. Shock dart, no, it's in. They're not gonna have time. 100 Thieves win the meets. Now he does end up switching things up, ends up getting a Phantom out of it. Look at the setup. It's a five on five post plant again. This time they're waiting for this peak to come through. You've got two players here. It's masterfully set up. Sean does pop front and back and starts to run into the site. Knows there's one inside the cyber cage. They try to get out onto the site. Koos is here with the judge, but it's not really going to work for too much longer. Mikael doing what he can. It's now down to Sean. It's a one on two. Nice flash around the corner, but the damage is dealt. Hold on. Sean still has a chance. Plays while going in. Hot hands as well. Taps the spike. Knows the recon dart's going to give away his position, but doesn't seem to care. As again, tapping that spike. There's again the shock darts coming through from Hiko. Hiko's also got the ult, but he's just going to go for the peak, potentially halfway. Doesn't matter. 12 rounds for 100 Thieves. We'll see what they can do here as we swap sides. They've got to pick up the win here. And a recon bolt to get the information. When to find one, but no. Two traded back immediately. Dicey trying to secure things here for 100 Thieves. Heaps of damage traded back and forth. Dicey walks out not unscathed. Who oh, better than on the flank is able to find three? And Sean from downtown gonna take us to double OT. That was a spike looking to go down. So much utility to try and stop the rotates. And Steel just gonna back away, wait for his team. We're in the 5v5 retake here, Bach. Yeah, this was a retake play, but what makes this that much more difficult is the fact that you don't have the ults available like you do in mm. regulation you might have one or two ults to help you get back onto the site now you're just relying on your utility which again is somewhat limited because one of your players dicey doesn't even have armor he flies out over the top of the site 100 thieves is gaining fast ground onto the site and again it's down to one they can't set up the post plants the way they need to oh man it got a little scary there in the end as Gimon does find four but it doesn't matter because he's done that play quite a few times. And while it has worked, it's also quite risky. So there's a blaze wall on hot hands down, but a counter hot hands comes through to slow down the push. And that keeps 100 Thieves at bay for the time being. The problem is that you've got one player here, Quinn, who's already low on HP, does go for that alt purchase. And again, we talked about this. Don't have any utility left after that. Doesn't even have the tailwind to utilize. This is a very risky peak. This is a make or break moment. Miss shot, tries to get away and can't. So ends up favoring a distant target instead of the one that was waiting right around the corner. Obviously had no idea that Steel was in that position. So we will find ourselves in a four on four retake on the A site. And this could be it. 100 Thieves getting that plant down. They only need to find this round win to close things out here on map one. It's felt like such a long journey and Steel, happy with the upgrade, finds a kill for himself, cuts the numbers down. Dicey is there. Mikhail was low. Now he was gone.
And it's all up. Pray 2v4. Demon not going to be good for four this time around. Who not, not getting that kill is actually huge. Not downing that owl drone faster means that instead of maybe getting an opening out of Demon, he's hung out to dry. And now they've got this C site. There's another utilization for the wall that actually goes into the tube and cuts that one in half. Dicey goes top rope and able to find one with the frenzy. Again, this is pre nerf. So that's why the frenzy is so prominent here in this pistol round as it comes down to Kusta and Kusta mid. So you've got two players potentially flanking, whereas you've still got Dicey on A, so if they were to decide to back off, which it doesn't look like they will, there's potential here. That's a big nade from Sean. That stops the spike, and now it initiates the movement from that player who's over on A, and, but it's too late. You've already got the flank coming in from Kusta and from Wynn, so Dicey's play does not work out well at all. The camera in mid is going to give away his position as well. The round is over. This is a great response from Gen G, and they're basically returning the favor because that happened a lot to them in that first map with 100 Thieves constantly picking up those force by wins. Yeah, it was Gen G picking up both of the pistol rounds. And then 100 Thieves were forced to battle back in those force ups. It might net early success. Do they spot him through the wall? That's what he's got to be careful of. The updraft is in. Nice shot in the tailwind to get away. The dart's going to give away the position as well. And that's Kusta converting onto Asuna. Just like that, Genji's got control of the round. And Kusta opting into using that wall, maybe just positioning as he finally falls down, but not before finding one more, but was able to get up top, get some elevation, and find that kill onto Asuna, who was spotted out. And once more, we're back to the clutching ways here of the Omens. It was Gimond in the last. Now Nitro, who has to come up huge. Has a good amount of credits, so can look to hang on to this one. But again, it's maybe not a gun that you want to hand over in what could have been a lower economy buy, although an operator here. 30 seconds left. Antum in the hands of Gimond still, as he's able to hang on to that one in the last Nitro. Just looking to send it as the credits. 1v4. This is uh, for the highlight reel. Should he be able to get it? The recon bolt, not actually going to spot him out there. But that spike, ooh, that's the opt down. Maybe he can do a bit more damage on the back end. The smoke goes through. Now the plant finally come from a lot of teams is basically just defaulting to running up A. Um, okay. Nitro is able to catch up to Huynh and totally catches him off guard. That's a big opening kill. Now they do drop Dicey in the meantime. Well, that's quite a way to start things off on the round. Steel is in position with the Sheriff. Has to be careful. The Boombot's going to give away the position. Looking to line up the shots. Somehow is still alive. Not sure how. Tucks into the corner. More damage being dealt as Asuna now so arrives with some support. And from distance, Asuna is going to get three kills on the round. It's down to just one remaining player in Nitro with the scooped up off. This is that incredible angle. It's so incredibly punishing. You can see the spam coming through in response, but it's too late. Steel's able to drop Mikael, getting some shots to the legs and body. And they've got four ults currently here on 100 Thieves with a man advantage, no less. This will be a very difficult retake for Gen.G. You should run. And Nitro has snuck past literally everything over towards that B site. As the lockdown gets used, Asuna able to find a kill here. 100 Thieves should be able to close things out. There it is. The flank on the way through, and they're just all corralled. They're sheepdogged on in for Nitro to pick up a couple. Gimon finds himself in a 1v5. A, a, not a very winnable one. Once more, looking to hang on to that Phantom. And Nitro... Very close to spotting out maybe the top of that hood or a barrel here. Kind of sniffing out where Gimon could be playing, trying to take the rifle away. And two seconds left. Steel's going to peek. And they haven't landed a dart just yet, but now they will. And now that's the ult coming out as well from Hiko. First pulse off the money. Somehow he's dodging these ult pops, but it's okay because Asuna is there. Meanwhile, we've got Steel currently lurking in mid with the turret. Catching one coming down from two. Mikael trying to get into position in time to maybe spot out one player, but Dicey's just too quick with the operator. And the round is very likely lost here. It's a five on three. They've still got res and they've also got the Jettle. Now there is a showstopper and neural theft available for Genji, but they've got no space. They've got no room to move onto this site. And with that kill coming through onto Kusa, the round is all but lost. 100 Thieves. They look so good on this attacking side right now. That's exactly where I was headed with it. They, they're not giving you, you talked about the change in momentum, the change in speed. The, usually we've seen some bloodshed by this point. 
So they're going to try to get on the site. The wall's going to come through. This is an opportunity to take down Asuna as there's a player close on site. But no, they didn't pounce. They didn't take advantage. And now the spike's been planted and everything's falling apart. He's still got a player on the other side. Nitro is decimating as he always does. The nade comes through and the round is looking incredibly promising as the damage that was dealt even there to Hiko is mitigated by him talked about how pivotal Nitro has been at times. He goes for the ult onto the site, does give away their position. We see a counter ult come out from Gimon, who sneaks behind enemy lines, somehow survives long enough as Hiko is trying to find a way to tiptoe out onto that ledge. By the time he gets there, Gimon is able to fire. It's an even three on three. But with Nitro's position in mid, they just have to wait. They have to allow Nitro to come in on this backstab. They have to make noise to keep them honest. There's the knives coming out, but they didn't wait long enough. Not patient enough for Nitro's lurk. Now everything falls down and falls apart. Since having creeped up, it is just going to be a fake. The slow one to keep on, but the knives from downtown win. To stop the push momentarily. Some way, somehow, if Asuna could get over there, there is another res available, and that is the best part about having your battle sage. There's the res to come through. It's Hiko from downtown. Find a tag onto one. Iman goes good for another. Onto Asuna. And ha had an advantageous position for a moment. Should be given up, but Gen G, they're starting to find these kills. They're trickling on through. But they're traded right back. He goes able to get another Nitro, goes into the smoke, and there he is, Mr. Multi Kill. This is their Killjoy Ultimate, so their AOK -okay just hanging on out there, both detained. And Gimond, you are not long for this world. <laughs> Finally spotted out in the end. It's quite difficult for Gen Chi to crack past the defense. Yeah, and the Sentinel difference in. Kusta on the Cypher, Steel on the Killjoy. There's not a whole lot of trips that you can put down in your spawn as they jump on to the site. Maybe we'll see something aggressive coming out from Kusta's. Bulls come through, kills traded back and forth. Gimon able to find another. So now Hunter Thief starting to get whittled down and it's Steel on the flank and the Sage to try and heal and get away. Now it's all up to Steel in a 1v4. And we were talking about it before we hopped on after that break. This was a round that Genji needed to win, and they know oh, nothing comes free here. No such thing as a free site against this 100 Thieves roster. The turret can be taken down. Steel now going to be privy to this as Kusta finds that kill. Nitro, though, taking a page out of Steel's book with that Bucky. Will be traded, and it is going to be a 3v4 retake. The remaining three 100 Thieves coming from that A site. I see. Aggressive posture, gonna find that kill. The right click three round burst from the stinger is just too strong. Now things are even for a moment. No hundred thieves starting to battle back here. And what does it matter if you won the pistol? Win has to go huge here in the next round. Bach, you called it. You said they have to win this one. And instead, it's 100 thieves to steal it away and to go to double digits. Gen G just cannot anti eco for the range. We'll have to see how Hiko decides to play that one. But as they push on, it gets a lot more scary. Hiko almost finding some contact there. He's going to swap on over. There's the shot coming down. The Bucky just enough. Sentence game on to death. Now Mikhail running out of time. It's the Bucky once more. 100 Thieves, they win the E-Bomb, the site. And they might actually be able to get some openings here. One of which is with Kusta, but you've also got the old pup. And the knives are out. It doesn't necessarily work so well as... Nitro was able to do what Nitro does best, but in the meantime, that allowed Quinn to get into position to at least trade that kill out. There's some rifles picked up here, and there's a fighting chance for Genji off the back of this. Now, Quinn knows better than to try to take out the, the drone with the knives, favoring that instead. He goes still on the shotgun, diving around, doing a deer hunter impersonation, and it's working out quite, quite nicely for him. You're down to just one remaining member of Genji again. Mikhail cannot fight his... Not only a, a, a step into or a, a peek inside the minds of 100 Thieves, but it's a 100 Thieves highlight reel. I get that info. It's, it's definitely an uphill battle and win, making things look a bit more doable, but Nitro is there to trade it back. And we know that Nitro, he's Mr. Multi-Kill, so I would imagine that's not the last kill we see in this round. One thing they did really good, though, they smoked off the turret. That's what allowed them to do what they just did. Because Steel was not anticipating that play being possible. 
because the turret was in that position. Now the res comes through, so Steel is brought back into the fold. Ult's being popped across the board. Demon tries to escape and get into a better position with his ult, but again, it's a numbers advantage here for 100 Thieves, and it's all down to the last remaining player. It's Kusta, who's getting pushed from Kitchen. The Cyber Cage does not get there in time. That's five on the round for Nitro, as Genji succumb to 100 Thieves.